guys. This is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, today's card features two of the gifts I'm giving away as a thank you gift when you order from me and use my host code for January 2022. I'm going to be using the Butterflies and Flowers Layering Decorative Masks and the Real Red Faux Linen Ribbon. These are both available in the January to June mini catalog, but when you order from me during January using my host code, you can get these free. You can find out about my thank you gifts by clicking on that thank you gifts link below in the video description and you can find out how you can get these and get the host code that way too. And if you're watching this after January, still click on that code and it will show you what my thank you gifts are for the month that you're watching this. These decorative masks are so much fun and I can't wait to show you how to do these. Now, if you'd like to stamp along with me, if you already got all the products, just click that um, blog post link below in the video description and you'll find the supply list and you'll also find all the dimensions that you need to make this card. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first off, I wanna show you the thank you gifts that I'm offering. The first one is a VIP project. You, if you place a $50 order before shipping and tax during January using my host code, you will get my VIP video plus the products to make the video mailed out to you. And then you can make the uh, card along with me in the video. Then if you place a $60 order, you will also get the Real Red Faux Linen Ribbon, it's a little hard to tell. This has got a really neat texture to it. I really like this ribbon. It's so pretty. It's so good for your Valentine's projects, Christmas projects. It's good for spring, for any kind of projects that you're going to have red in. So it's, it's a really pretty ribbon. And if you get up to the $200 mark, you will also get the Butterflies and Flowers Layering Decorative Masks. Now, I love these. Here's the butterfly I'll be using. Let me move this, these out of the way so you can see them a little better. But there's the butterfly and I'm also using this uh, background one. So these will be the two that I'm using. The other ones that come with it, as you can see this one already, this one. Then we've got this pretty background one. And here's another one where you can do some layering. You use some of the flowers and layer them with different colors. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Actually, I am going to be using some of these flowers. I forgot about that. So I'll hold on to this one. I don't think I'm using this one. I can't wait to make something with these flowers. Those are so pretty. But the way my thank you gifts work, it's a, um, a cumulative. So like if you place two different orders in the month of January, I'll add those two orders before your shipping and tax. That's the total I go by. And then that'll decide the uh, gifts you get. So when you get the $50 mark, you get the video. If you get up to 60, you get both the video and the ribbon. If you get up to $200 in a month, then you'll get all three, the video, the ribbon, and these masks for free. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the card. Uh, we've got very little stamping to do. I am gonna be using the Special Moment Stamp Set. This is a celebration product. Because it is such a big stamp set, it's one of the level twos. So with a, with a $100 order, pick this out as your free item during celebration. And celebration ends February 28th of 2022. Love celebration, you get so many different free things. And if you wanna find out all the different ways you can get free things, just click on that celebration link below in the video description too. I've got a lot of links down there and you can find out everything there. But I'll be using the Happy Birthday stamp in this. I love this set because there's so many different greetings. So if you want a set that has a bunch of different greetings for so many different cards, this is the one to get. So I'll be using that Happy Birthday one. Okay, I am using one set of dies. These are in the annual catalog. These are the Brilliant Wings dies. I almost forgot I had these. These came out last year. I love them. Now, I'm, I'm glad I remembered them. I'm going to use this butterfly right here. So that's the die you're going to want to get out. Okay, I think we'll hurry up and uh, do the stamping. And it's actually gonna be heat embossing. So I've got a piece of real red. This is two and three quarter by three quarter inches. I'm gonna grab the happy birthday stamp and my Versamark pad. I'm gonna ink this up. The reason to use the Versamark, it's clear and it also stays wet for about 10, 15 minutes or so. That way you can put the embossing powder on it. We'll stamp it right here in the middle. Hold it down for a few seconds. There we go. You can't really see it, but it is, does leave a watermark. You might be able to see it a little bit there in the video. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my white emboss powder. This is part of the basic Stampin' Embossing powders. They come in sets now. This one comes with white, black, and clear. So I'm gonna take this. I always put them in these little um, containers that you can get. This is one of those ones at Walmart, cheap ones, not the fancy Tupperware ones that you pay a lot of money. <laughs> like the Rubbermaid ones. This is actually the probably the great value. There we go. Get the 
stuff off of there. There we go. That looks pretty good. So there's my happy birthday. Now you can see it because the Versamark is holding all that powder on there. Now we want to melt that powder to get it heat embossed. So I'm going to grab my heat tool. I'm going to get my stamp and pierce mat out of the way. Don't want to melt that. I'm going to grab some tweezers here. If I can get a hold of them. There we go. That way I can hold on to this and not worry about getting my fingers. Now it is easier if you let this uh, heat up for a little bit. I'm going to keep my hand away from it because it does get very hot. You don't want to burn your fingers. Hold this down. I'm going to try to do it at an angle. Let me bring it up here a little bit. It's the, uh, the day on the right is going to start getting a bright white here in a minute. Let me get a little... Oh, actually, the middle of the birthday is. I was aiming wrong. There we go. Can you see the difference? See how the birthday is a lot brighter than the happy? And I just stay on that area until it starts melting, and then I move. Don't go back and forth like this, because it's going to take you forever. There we go. So voila, now we've got a uh, raised happy birthday, bright and white. So we'll go ahead and put this to the side and use this later. And now we're going to start using those masks. Okay, the first thing we're going to mask, I'm going to use my Stamparatus. There's a way to use tape and the Stamparatus. When I use bigger pieces, and this happens to be a 3 and 7 eighths by 5 and 1 eighth inch piece, um, I think it's easier to use the Stamparatus. But you just play around. I'll show you all, uh, both different ways, and you can uh, use the one that works best for you, but this one works the best for me. And I'm going to grab a little piece of my Post-it tape, and I've made a little bitty circle type thing. So I can put this on here so I've got, so it's sticky on both sides. And I'll just put this here that way. I don't have to worry about this piece moving on me. Grab my magnets. I'm going to make sure that I have them far apart. <laughs> we don't want them clashing together. And I'm going to grab this mask here. Now this one is not uh, doing the layers. This is just using the mask like a, you normally would. I'm going to put this on as straight as I can. Make sure this paper here, I'm using a piece of the Stamparatus grid paper to protect the uh, Stamparatus from getting ink all over it. And then I'm kind of looking at these little dots here to get that lined up. Then we'll put this one uh, here. Actually, I'm going to put it right here. And I'll explain that here in just a minute. I played around with it. I had actually used, because uh, I've got a couple more magnets, to put them in different, uh, like three or four places. And they kind of got in the way. And this thing actually moved on me. I found this easier. So maybe a little bit above the halfway point, let's say. I'm going to grab my Petal Pink ink pad. And I'm going to grab my uh, blending brush. And I'm going to start blending. I'm starting off of the cardstock. I'm holding this one down with my hands. Okay. Get this inked up. And it's going to be in different shades. That is okay. Don't worry. When you're doing the bottom, you can hold up here and it won't move on you too. Because you don't want to have your fingers in the way while you're doing this. Okay. To me, hopefully you can see that. You can see how that got darker. So now holding this down, I'm just going to slide these down. That way I'm not going to move my paper. Okay, or move the mask. Actually, the paper's not going to move, but the mask definitely could. So now I'm going to hold this up here and get these bottom ones done. Get some more ink on here. Okay, then I'm going to come down here and do the top until it looks pretty good to me. I love using the blending brushes. You can definitely use uh, stamping, uh, oh, stampin' daubers and things like that, but, or sponge daubers, I mean. But I think the blending brushes work easier. We'll lift this up, and there we go. Now, I've got different shades. Like I said, I am okay with that. But isn't that neat? Actually, I kind of like that effect. So we've got this one done, and now I'll show you the other ways to uh, do the masks. Now I'm going to show you how to use the masks layering. So I'm using another big piece. I'm still going to use my Stamparatus, but I am going to use some tape too. So I'm kind of combining two different techniques. So this is a four by five and a quarter inch piece. This is going to be for the inside of our card. I'm going to grab one of the magnets here and just have it hold my cardstock in place. Okay. Then I'm going to grab one of these flowers. I'm going to be using this flower here and this one here with the butterflies goes perfectly with this one. So first off, I'm going to use the base of the flower, put this down where I want it, and I'm going to use some tape here. You can use masking tape, you can use um, uh, 
really not in a masking tape that'll tear up your paper you can use pa painters tape and washi uh, washi tape this is post-it tape i like this a lot because it comes off and doesn't hurt the cardstock at all now this tape is holding it in place but it's also covering up some of the basic white so if i accidentally go up a little too high i don't have to worry about getting ink where i don't want it so see these leaves here i want to get those covered up because they're on the cardstock cover those up these I'm not going to worry about they're not on the cardstock so just as long as those are covered up we're good and this is going to hold it into place now I'm going to bring in my petal pink blending brush actually it's just a blending brush it's about what I've been using with my petal pink though get some ink on it and then we're going to cover it up just ink it up here sometimes the flowers I like the center to be a little darker and then I go out a little lighter on the outside I want to make sure that it's good and covered and I don't know if you noticed, I started getting off on the leaves, but that's not, there's no problem because that's on my grid paper. So that looks pretty good. So now we'll take the tape off. So I love about that post-it tape, it comes off so easy. Now we've got our flower and that tape protected me from getting any ink where I didn't want it. Now I'm gonna bring this one in. I'm gonna get this centered on there like so. You, can, you may not be able to see the outline here in the video, but I can see it, so I'm getting it nice and centered. I'm gonna put this one across the top so it doesn't move, making sure, so I'm barely on the mask. It's enough to hold it in place, but I'm not covering up that flower. And it's also protecting my cardstock again. We'll put this one there. Now there are two spaces here on cardstock I don't wanna get ink in. So we'll cover that up, and here's another little piece to get that little corner. Okay, now we're gonna go with the darker color. So the detail one is the one you always wanna do the darker color. So I've got another blending brush and using my real red. Holding this down, I'm gonna color this in. Making sure I get all the edges and that tape is making sure, oh, I've got one little, no, that's off the car stuck, I'm good. I saw that little antenna and panicked there for a second. But that tape is making it so I don't mess up. So we've got that on there. Take the tape off. So I do suggest using tape when you do the layering since there more than, there's more than one opening in that mask. There we go. And now we've got our layered flower. Isn't that neat? Get a little closer so you can see it. Now we're gonna do that butterfly. Now it's on a smaller piece of cardstock. So I'm not gonna use the Stamparatus because these magnets, the way they're raised, I kept hitting uh, the blending brush on the magnet and it got in my way. So I, now I'm just gonna use just the tape version. So let's get that set up. Okay, I brought in a piece of grid paper to protect my workspace. And I'm using a piece of basic white this is three and three quarter inches by three and one eighths inches. I'm bringing in my butterfly. And what I'm going to do, I don't want this paper moving on me because it is smaller than the mask and I can't hold on to it. So I'm actually, let's get another piece of uh, tape here. I'm just gonna make a little bitty loop here like this, stick it on the back and lay this down. That's gonna help that cardstock from moving around on me. You can also use some temporary tape on the back too. Now I'm going to put this butterfly on and I want this at an angle like so. But I want to make sure it is still on that cardstock so I can see the edges of my cardstock. I don't know if you can see that in the video but if you ever try this you'll be able to see with no problem because these are definitely see-through. Now I'm going to bring in my tape. There's some cardstock here I want to cover up and I also want to make it so this doesn't move. So let's put some there. We'll put some right here to hold the uh, mask down. Now we've got that flower there, don't we? So we're gonna put a little bit here. I wanna make sure I don't cover up my butterfly, so kind of put this at an angle. You kind of have to play around with it so you don't cover up your butterfly, but cover up that flower. And then I've got this one here. And that should cover up, yep, that covered up the whole flower. Now and that tape that's underneath my cardstock is gonna make it so that paper doesn't move on me. So I'm gonna take some petal pink. Like I said, whenever you wanna do the base. Oh, I've got one here too, don't I? Just to be on the safe side, we're gonna cover that up. So here's another piece of tape. There we go. Now I think we've got all the cardstock covered up. So we'll cover this up with our petal pink. I love this butterfly, I think you're going to too. And I will be, I'm sure I'm going to be doing a uh, card with the flower, those big flowers in the mask. I really like those flowers. Those are pretty. Okay, now we've got that ready to go. 
think it looks like I need to put a little more pink right here. Okay, so now we'll lift this up and we've got that pretty butterfly, isn't that neat? Okay, looks like I might've gotten a little red, but I kinda like that effect, it looks pretty. Okay, now we're gonna take this tape off again because we're gonna use it again. But now we're gonna take the detail part of the butterfly and we're gonna put this right here in the center, get it all lined up. You've got the body that you want to be in the middle and look at those wings, make sure everything looks even. When you're ready, then I'm gonna take one of these big pieces put it across here to hold it down for me. And I'm covering up that little corner of cardstock that was showing. Another piece of cardstock we'd wanna cover up. Oops, I didn't cover it all up. Let's get that lifted back up again. I missed that one little spot. But make sure that you do not cover up your butterfly design. Okay, let's try this. See how much we can cover up with that one piece. There we go. That looks good. So now I'm gonna take, oh, I see one little bitty spot. I'm probably being paranoid, I probably would've missed it, but knowing me, I would probably hit it with the red. <laughs> so now we've got our real red. Oops, I got the wrong blending brush, that's okay. I'm done with the petal pink now, so I don't have to worry about that. And the neat thing about our blending brush is you can rinse them out and get most of the ink out with water. At least I've, that's what I've been able to do so far. Get this all covered up, and I want this to be a deep red, so I'm gonna cover it up pretty good here. And I kind of moved that again. Hopefully I didn't mess that up. Nope, it looks fine. So we've got this. Take the tape off. Just wait till you see this butterfly. It is so neat. I liked that flower on the inside, but this one isn't that gorgeous. Oop, I had some ink on my fingers. Be careful of that. That's not from the mask, that's from my fingers. But isn't that neat? I love that butterfly. So we're all done with the masking, so let's get this card. Oh, we do need to get the die cutting machine out. I'm gonna be using the mini one because I've only got one little butterfly to die cut. Okay, since I'm using just a little butterfly die, I decided to use my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. So we'll get this set up. When you die cut, you need the platform number one and a standard cutting plate number two. And I'm gonna use a piece of uh, gold paper that's from the gold and rose gold metallic specialty paper. You've seen me use this paper a lot. I really like it. Let me get this up. Maybe the light will hit it a little better. We'll get our butterfly on there. I'm not gonna worry about using tape. I just wanna make sure it stays on the, uh, in, on the paper. Okay, now we're gonna run this through. With it being intricate, I think I'm gonna run make it come through a couple times. Maybe, there we go. Actually, four times. <laughs> But that should have gotten it pretty good. Take this off, let me turn it around. Oh yeah, I can tell that got through just fine. Take this out of here and take all the little pieces out. I think I'm gonna use my die brush. Let me get my machine out of the way. Get the little uh, foam pad that comes with it. Get my brush attachment and my take your pick tool. Take the putty end off. Get this on and we're ready to go. Lost my little lid here. You know, I think I'm gonna turn that around just so I don't poke myself. There we go. <laughs> we'll put this here. I'm gonna put th this back in the die. This helps protect that in the intricate part of the die cut from getting torn up. And you just kind of brush these out. This is gonna take maybe not all of the pieces, but a lot of the pieces. So you can see a bunch of them have come out. I have noticed with this metallic paper, now I need the poker back, It come, they come out a little bit harder, not too bad than the cardstock. I think it's because it's got the uh, texture to it, but it's definitely cut it, but it does take a little time to get all these little pieces out. So I will take these out off camera and be right back. Okay, I've got all the pieces off. I promise you it took me less than a minute, but when you're sitting watching a video, a minute seems like an eternity, so I didn't want you to have to sit there and watch me do that. But it only took took me a few seconds, definitely under a minute to get that done. Isn't that neat? I love that. Okay, so now we'll go ahead. We've got all the die cutting done, all the masking done. Now it's time to put this card together. I'm gonna grab my card base. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece. I'm gonna fold this in half, line those corners up. I think that's the easiest way to get it lined up is doing the corners. We've got that ready to go. 
And I'm going to use some of the Sweet Talk designer series paper. This is in the Sweet Talk suite in the January to June mini catalog, and it happens to be the Valentine set. Now, I liked both of these sides, okay? So we're going to use both of them. So they are both the same size, they're one and a half by five and one eighth. And I'm going to grab my cutter. And what I'm going to do, I just wanted to save, on, save some paper and not have to do a two and a quarter and then I'd end up having some leftovers on my cart, uh, in my uh, designer series pack. If I put them on top of each other, there's no border because I want to ha have the lines showing as a border. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this in half lengthwise. So that's going to be two three quarter inch strips. It's okay if it's not exactly three quarter, but that, this works. Mine was on there. If they're off a little bit, don't worry because you're only going to be showing part of it. So bring this back in. I'm going to put some seal along one of the long edges. You're going to definitely get some here in the corners along the middle. There we go. Turn this over. I think it's easier to line it up this way. So put my hand here. And we're going to line those up to where I have about maybe a quarter of an inch showing on the outside or an eighth of an inch, I'm not sure, in between an eighth and a quarter. We'll turn this over, put adhesive on the other side, and line this one the same way. So now I've saved a little bit on the paper because with a 12 inch sheet it's a lot nicer to be able to do two inch strips because then if you end up using the whole sheet all two inches, you're not going to have any little bitty quarter inch or half an inch left. So there we go. That one's ready to go. So let's grab this one that we uh, put did the first mask with. I'm going to put some adhesive here along the strips. And that's probably good enough. I don't think I need to put any across the top because that's pretty. They're pretty close together. I'm going to line this up. Oh, it looks like I've got a little bit hanging off here, so that means I probably cut that one a little too long. Actually, yep, I've got one over there, so we will just cut these off. I figured it would have to be both sides since I, they came from the same sheet. There we go. So make sure you check that out before you at attach. Actually, you can fix it, fix it after you attach it, but it's an easy fix if you have anything hanging over. That looks pretty good. Get it nice and straight. Turn this over. Oh, I've got a little bit hanging here. I thought I might have made it a little too long. Okay, we want that to be even with that uh, petal pink layer. Now we're going to take a piece of the uh, real red faux linen ribbon. This is like I said at the beginning, this is one of my thank you gifts when you order in January. I'm going to put a glue dot on each end like so. Now with it being cloth, you kind of need to help the glue dot come up a little bit, but it's pretty easy to come up. And then you're going to put this right across here. I can't remember if I said the size. This is a six inch piece because I thought we need a little something here in the middle. So now we've got that. Okay, now that the ribbon's on there, we can put this on the card base. So I'll put some adhesive here in each corner. And I always make sure I put a little bit on each piece of ribbon so it doesn't pop up there. And of course we need some on that long end. And we will put this on like so. Okay. And then I'm going to grab that butterfly that we did a little bit ago. Oh, I love that butterfly. <laughs> We're going to put some adhesive on here. And this is just going to go right across the middle. It is a little narrower than the petal pink piece. I kind of like seeing a little bit of pink on each end. There we go. Now, if you want it all white, just make this be a little bit longer. Okay, so now let's grab the greeting that we heat embossed. And we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. Black or the white will work. This is kind of in between being dark and uh, light. So either one will work. Take the paper backing off. And then I'm going to line the right edge of the greeting with the right edge of the uh, card base. The reason I'm doing this and bring it down a little bit so we see some white up there 
if I made it go over to the right a little bit more, we would have covered up more of that uh, beautiful butterfly. And we don't want to do that. Let me angle this to my to me. There we go. I want to make sure it was straight and put that down. I thought it really needed something else. And that's why I had us use those brilliant wings dies to make this butterfly. So let me grab a glue dot here. And a little of it might show through the little openings here, but don't worry, we're gonna be covering that up here in just a minute. So we're gonna angle this here. I wanna make sure the wings don't go over the edge of the card base. And then this way we can kind of play around with this and get it like a 3D effect, like the uh, butterflies flying. Okay, then when I got done with that, oh, we definitely need bling. So one of my favorite embellishments right now are the iridescent rhinestones. These are also in the Sweet Talk Suite. Say that five times fast. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one of each side. There's there are large, medium, and small ones. I love this iridescent look because when you move it in the light, it changes colors. It is so, oh, they're pretty. Then I'm gonna use the medium-sized one. So that was a large one. Use a medium-sized one on the middle of my butterfly there. And I'm gonna grab a small one and put one up here. So now we've got the front all done. So I'm gonna grab the inside that we did earlier. This was the second thing we masked. We did a lot of masking on this one. But I wanted to get you, uh, teach you how to use those. They're not hard to use and they're a lot of fun. I can't wait to make something with that flower, which I probably said before, but I'm excited about that flower, that big flower. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put this here on the inside. And we are done with today's card. So I hope you enjoyed today's card and had fun stamping with me. And if you'd like to stamp with me again, just click on that subscribe button below and select uh, the, be the bell that'll pop up. Click on that and then select all. That way YouTube will notify you every time I do a new video and you won't miss anything. And don't forget about my thank you gifts. In January, with a $50 order, you get my VIP project, which comes with a video project and the supplies to make the card. You'll also, if you get to do a $60 order, you get the uh, video and the faux ribbon, faux linen ribbon, the re real red one. And then if you place a $200 order, you'll get both of those items plus the masks that we used. So um, just click on that thank you gift link below to find out all about it because you have to use my host code. And uh, I'd love to send out those thank you gifts. I'd love to thank my customers. So I really do appreciate them. Speaking of customers, if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. And I'd love to send out your first set of catalogs absolutely free. This is the annual catalog that's available right now, the January to June mini catalog and the celebration brochure. And this is good till the end of February and you get free stuff. So you don't want to miss this. And $50 increments, you can, uh, on an order, you can get some free stuff. So I'll take these away so you can see the card one more time. Thank you so much for watching my video and please support my channel by giving me a thumbs up or commenting below. I really do appreciate it. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.